weekend, my husband goes hunting with his best friend, but he comes home with nothing. So I start to get a little suspicious, and I decide to take his crossbow, the arrows that go with it, and hide them under his seat to see if he calls me and says, hey babe, where, where'd you put them? Did you touch them? Did I leave them home? Well, he comes home, doesn't mention anything about the crossbows, doesn't mention anything about the arrows that I hid, and he comes home with nothing once again. So I decide to take our kids the next time he goes hunting and drop them off at my mom's house. Decide to also put an air tag in his truck so I can follow him. <laughs> where he says he's gonna be, he's not there. He's 200 miles in the wrong direction. And I come to find out it's a motel. So I go to this motel and when I pull up, the first thing I see is his best friend's wife's car. So I feel a hand on my shoulder and I jump and it's her. And I'm thinking the audacity of this woman. And I start accusing her. I'm like, why are you with my husband at a motel? Every what, what is happening? She says, well, hold on. I gave my husband my car because his truck wasn't working. And she's also suspicious because her husband never goes anywhere without his truck. He'll stay home if it's broken. We walk in, tell me what room they're in. Tell, like, please help us out. He's like, we can't do that. Finally, Trisha, the best. My be his best friend's wife is like, I'll give you $100 if you tell us what room they're in right now. Clearly their standards aren't that high. He goes, they're in 202. You make a left, go up the stairs. We're back up those stairs, in front of the door, puts the key in, opens as quick as possible, and mm, I'm just in a state of shock of what I'm seeing. I, I'm not even going to traumatize you guys with it exactly, but just imagine. What did you see? There are 10 other men from our neighborhood, all undressed, all doing things that... I won't repeat. She starts screaming. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening because my ex-husband now is one of the most homophobic men I have ever met in my life. If someone is super homophobic, maybe just be a little more than suspicious. Hey, hey that's true. That is true. First off, I can't believe the whole, so the, all the men in your neighborhood was on the low? All the men in y'all neighborhood was on the low? Like, what type of... <laughs> but that is true. The most homophobic people have things to hide. Me? I don't got no problems with y'all. I don't got no problems with the gay community. You feel me? As long as you don't, you don't try to violate me, because there's a lot of gay dudes running around here feel as though if they could uh, turn a straight man out, they have accomplished something. Like, that's a... A trophy on a wall. As long as you all come hunting in this direction, I don't. You do what you do. You feel me? Do what you do, but don't come hunting in this direction. You treat me with respect. I treat you with respect. You respect my boundaries. I respect your boundaries, whatever they might be. Just don't. Just don't come pointing your pistol over here. That's how I feel. But dudes that run around here just super homophobic. They scared. Homie might say something, homie might get too close, and the hair on their arm start standing up. Might expose some of that little sugar in the bottom of their tank. They scared. They be wary, bro. I never I never been homophobic, dog. You know what? Now, let me stop. Culturally, I grew up homophobic because I'm Caribbean. You feel me? In, in, the, in the Caribbean islands, Batiman fi dead. That's, that's, you know, if you Caribbean, you know that. Batiman fi dead. But... At the end of the day, I don't give a fuck. Like, what you do in the privacy of your home is your, is your business. What you do in the privacy of your own home is your business. Just don't come shooting in this direction. I just had to, you know what I'm saying? I had to let y'all know. How old are you, ladies? I'm 49. 40 fine. <laughs> I'm 22. Has dating gotten easier for you or harder? I don't know. I'm about to find out. Why do you say that? Because I just left my husband. Is your sex drive still as high as it was when you were her age? Oh my god. <laughs> it's higher, baby. Higher. Like, at 22, I had no idea what was going on. At 40 fine? <laughs> yeah. Now you know exactly yeah. all the pleasure of it. I know of it. exactly what to tell you, where to go, how to get there, mm. and a little then more and then. Mm. I mean, you like a young guy, right? Uh, I'm not just I all about. I mind trying that out. Be Might as well have some fun while you're still here. Listen, I met my husband 20 years ago. Let's not talk about that. Oh, I'm in Miami for the weekend. Oh, you know what I'm saying, sweetheart? I remember what a young boy tastes like. I wouldn't mind tasting that again. 
Jamaican chocolate? I love that. Yes. I mean, we are on an island. We might as well. I mean, we're tropical people, aren't we? I'm Dominican. All right, so when are we going to send the little kid home? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, the hotel I, room is back there, she's baby. She's my roommate. I could send her home, but... <laughs> no! How old are you, ladies? I'm four. Shorty said, we could, we could, we could... I'm thinking she's hinting at a threesome. Um, okay, I'm gonna say this. You, you 49, you 45, you look good for your age. You just got divorced. Now, you're 49... And you're hanging with a 22-year-old and she does not look like your daughter. You're 49. You're in Miami doing thought activities with somebody that is half your age. More than half your age. Right? Yeah. I don't know about all that. I don't know about all that. And then you, you was low-key finna shit on your husband. I'm glad he stopped you. Yeah, I met my husband in my 20s and... Stop right there. Stop right there. You was low-key finna shit on your husband. So y'all been together for 20 years and you still was finna come out and say some wild shit about this man. Why y'all be doing that? As soon as the relationship is over... Oh my God. I'm... I can finally breathe. I can finally be myself. What's being yourself? Jumping on random dicks? Huh. I ain't saying all women do that, but I've been seeing that a lot. As soon as the relationship is over, it's... Oh, I'm free. Freedom is coming tomorrow. Like, you couldn't be yourself in a relationship? You couldn't be yourself. That's why men be having trust issues, bro. Because a lot of the times, what it feels like, or what it seems like you want to do, is entertain other men. That's what being yourself is. You mad you have to respect your husband and not entertain other dudes? Is that what it is? You can finally be yourself? Do you think men prefer natural bodies or BBL bodies? Natural. natural. Why? Because I think at the root of it, BBL bodies is an exaggeration of the natural body. And I think most of the women who get the BBL bodies are the ones who are lacking the natural body in the beginning. So I think at the end of the day, it's natural. Do you think men prefer natural? Now you being nice. Most of these joints that get BBLs want attention. You being nice. I know, I know women that got BBLs that got bigger butts than... 50% of the, 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 the women in the earth. Better bodies than 50% of the women in the earth, but still took a loan out to go get a BBL. Yeah, I said she took a loan out to go get a BBL. Yep. Um, that's the, I, it's the, the BBL epidemic is so crazy. Could you imagine in about 40 years when these motherfuckers is old and, and, and senile? Whoo! It's a lot of people in them nursing home gonna have a hard time wiping them cheeks. It's a hard. It's a, they're gonna have a hard time wiping them cheeks. You know when people get old, uh, they can't clean themselves, right? They can't clean themselves, so they you know they have uh, I forgot what you call what was the proper term for people who um home aids. I think it's called home aids, right? That's that's I'm gonna call it that. Maybe it's the right thing. That's what came to my mind, but um. Yeah, man, they, they're going to have a hard time getting through all that fake-ass flubber to, to wipe wipe them, them people clean. Shit, this shit is disgusting to me. It's nasty. And then the crazy thing is it only look good in clothes. It only look good in clothes. There are some exceptions to the rules, I will say that. But it don't even feel good. It be hard. It, it don't even move the way. You know what I'm saying? It be hard, bro. It be hard. Think about it. You doing, you know, dog, doggy style, doggy position. The best thing about doggy position is when when the cheeks hit like your pelvis area, it's, it's soft. 
You know what I'm saying? You get to see it break dancing. You see it. It, it looked like you threw a, a rock in a puddle and. Right? BBLs don't be like that. BBLs don't. Do, think about a BBL like this. Don't make a full muscle, just make a half a muscle. Half a muscle. That's what a BBL feel like. This that. Imagine that hitting across your your your, uh, your crotch area. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. She paid money for that. To look good, but serve no purpose. It served no purpose but to look good. It don't do what Cheeks is supposed to do. Ain't no fucking way, bro. Ain't no way. Bro, you're tripping. What the hell? We talking about BBLs and look what popped up. My wife calling me right now, too. But we talking about BBLs and look what popped up. She walking in the airport looking crazy. Knocking everybody luggage down. This is what y'all want? This is what y'all like? Hmm? That's what y'all like? I be opinionated about a lot of things, but I, I, I'm standing firm on my beliefs that BBLs are trash. They're trash. It's women out here that went to the gym and build their butts. I'd rather you do that than go pay somebody to build one for you. You out here put together like Frankenstein. 